Hello, this is Dr. Shane, and we are back this week. We are talking about infidelity. We are talking about infidelity, and we're just going to dive right into it. And the biggest question I get with people, especially after a confession, especially after a confession, why can't you just get over it? I had this couple come in not too long ago, and he was saying, yeah, we both had an affair, but I told you. In fact, he had had way more affairs. I think she got tired of his affairs, frankly, and had one of her own. But he says, I told you, so you should be able to get over it. And he felt him telling her made it different. And she was just traumatized. He wasn't so traumatized, to be honest with you. He just wanted to even the slates. He felt like, look, you got me back. We're good, honestly. But she could not move over, could not just get over it. And if you are out there and someone had an affair on you, I'm going to venture to say you likely can't just get over it either. And let me give you three reasons why. The first reason is civil war. Civil war. It is a civil war between your brain and your heart. The second reason, the second reason is post-traumatic stress disorder and getting re-triggered. The third thing is the Zargarnik effect. The Zargarnik effect. And I'll talk about what all those are. First thing. So, people come in to my office and they say, and I've had people come and say, I want to be at a different place. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. This sucks. It takes up way too much energy. And their spouse is like, are you crazy? And if you've ever had a spouse that has had an affair on you, you likely know what I'm talking about. You are thinking about it 24-7. It takes a lot of energy. Probably the last emotional place you want to be short of grieving a, a loved one, like a serious loved one, right? Because it's just consuming. It, it's there all the time. Go to the browser if you've ever had this happen and just type in CW. Because <coughs> Sorry about that. The civil war is between your heart and your brain. Your heart crushed. I don't ever want to be hurt like this again. But I love them. I want to move forward. Your brain is like, ooh, what you just did to me. And this is universal, male or female. Ooh, what you just, what I'm going through right now, I don't ever want to go through th this again. And I'm not going to. The brain is thinking facts. Let's just move on. Let's cut our losses. And it is a war between your heart and your brain. Some days the heart wins, or sometimes of the day, sometimes the heart wins, sometimes the brain wins. But it's a constant battle, and you're doing like this, like you got your foot on the gas and the brake, trying to figure out what to do. That is a civil war. If you can relate to that, type in CW, or you just write out civil war because it's a painful place to be. So that's one reason you can't just get over it. You want to. I'll ask people. I have to ask you in front of your spouse. If you talking to them, say, babe, is this like a civil war? And say, what do you mean? A battle between your heart and your brain. Ask them that. I guarantee you they will tell you that it is. So look at the expression on their face when you say it, because finally someone's captured it. And they'll, you know, it won't make it go away, but at least for that moment, they'll feel a lot more understood. So very difficult to do. You are trying to protect yourself from being hurt, being hurt again. So the next thing is we now have what we call post-traumatic stress disorder. Is it the same as seeing a body blown up in front of you? No, it is not that level of PTSD. But if you come in on your spouse who you're totally in love with and they're in your bed with someone else, depending on how you catch them now, it's virtual. So still has the same result. It's like, boy, I thought my family was secure. I thought you were my person. Reality as I know it no longer exists. That's the post, that post-traumatic stress disorder. That's the traumatic part. Life as I knew it doesn't exist. My family isn't the same. I got to choose 
Am I going to break us up? Are we going to stay together? Are we going to be cheating forever? Am I weak? So it gets re-triggered. It gets re-triggered. So I had a woman once, very dyslexic woman. She came in and she had talked about an aqua scarf, an aqua scarf. And I'll never forget it. She called me one day. She's like, we got to come in. They came in and she was talking about this woman. Her husband had sent this aqua scarf to her. And, you know, they had an affair. We worked through it. Six months later, we discharged him. Three months later, she calls me back. She's screaming hysterically. Now, this is woman is a professional person. This woman is high up in D.C. government, like real high up, right? Like White House almost type high up. And so she's traumatized. And I say, what happened? I thought we worked through this. She says, well, I was looking at old magazine, and guess what they were featuring? Aqua. I said, yeah. And Aqua Scarf. I was like, oh, God. And she was re-triggered. And so... We talked about it a little. I was really busy. I said, why don't you come back in two weeks? So two weeks she comes back. She's talked herself down now because she realized that the problem that led to the affair was they were disconnected and she was going through surgery. Not that that's an excuse for someone to have an affair, but she had been having a multitude of health problems. They felt horrible. He felt horrible touching her because he was going to hurt her. It's a very elaborate thing, but the bottom line is they realized that the damage in their friend and the disconnection had been taken care of, and she was able to talk herself down. I say that to say no matter where you are, don't define your marriage by this moment. You will get to a different place, and it doesn't mean you won't be re-triggered, but you probably, after an intervention, won't go down as low or stay as long. You won't go down as low or stay as long. So post-traumatic stress disorder, anything could re-trigger them. It could be a song. It could be uh, a horn. It could be a phone ring if you have a certain beat. It could be they drive by a Starbucks and they happen to, you know, know that you met this person at Starbucks once. It's, it gets elaborate. So anyways, they just get re-triggered, but boy, it doesn't mean they don't want to get over it. It doesn't mean they don't want to be another place. They're still fighting a civil war. They don't do that unless they love you and want it to work out. So don't be freaked out by that. The third thing is what we call the Zargonic effect. The Zargonic effect. That starts with a Z. Go to the browser, type in a Z. The Zargonic effect is simply this. We can't move forward if we can't close the loop. If we can't close the loop. If something about your story is incomplete and they just don't buy it, they will not move forward because it won't make sense to them and they won't be able to move forward. So you have to ask yourself, and that's why I say confession is something to really think about so they don't have to think they're crazy. You have to ask yourself, do you want their inability to close the loop to make you tripped up on this forever? And we may be ha- and I've seen that happen where we have trust problems for like, I mean, I've seen it. I won't say how long, but a long time. So you have to decide, you know, am I going to close the loop, give them the facts, and let them make the decision to move forward or not. More times than not, they're going to move forward, especially if you have a family. Anyways, I find people are prepared for infidelity. They can't deal with the betrayal. They can forgive you for the lie you told, but they can't forgive you if they think you're still telling them a lie. Anyways, those are the three reasons we can't just get over it. There is the civil war that I talked about between your heart and your brain. There is post-traumatic stress disorder and it getting re-triggered. And finally, there is the Zargarnik effect. They can't close the loop because you haven't given them the whole story and it doesn't make sense why you would be saying that you met them at that. I'm sorry, that you weren't where you said you were, but you were really... At Fridays, you were at Fridays, I'll use on a Saturday just to be funny, but at 10 in the morning. They're like, Friday they ain't open at 10 in the morning. In fact, I called. They said they don't open till 11 for lunch. So I say that to say, or that's the easy one. I'll give you another one. Or you say Friday night, you were out with your boys, and she calls your boy 
And he says, yeah, we went to the basketball game. She calls up and finds out, in my, this case, the Wizards, they were on a road game. At a road game that night. Now she can't close the loop or he can't close the loop. Whatever the case may be. Anyways, Dr. Shane, this is why people can't just get over it. I'll see you Friday. And we will continue down this path. Make it a great day. Bye-bye, Dr. Shane. <laughs>